Okay, now work out this one. So, this is a question using E D means Ellingham diagram, find out what is the lowest temperature at which zinc oxide can be reduced to zinc by carbon. Let us say zinc oxide curve is this one, which is the temperature you are going to use or which is the temperature that is required to convert zinc oxide to zinc by using carbon. So, this is the temperature right. So, the carbon monoxide curve is in the green, zinc oxide curve if this is the one, this is the temperature around let us say 1250, this point around 1250 you need to convert zinc oxide to zinc by using carbon right. What is the minimum temperature required for the reduction of, of magnesium oxide by carbon? more than 2000, because this is the green curve, this is the magnesium oxide curve and that is the point where you are having that intersection and that is more than 2000, let us say 2150. So, at that point, at this point carbon going to carbon monoxide formation is thermodynamically more favorable compared to magnesium going to magnesium oxide. So, net reaction will be magnesium oxide reacting with carbon giving you carbon monoxide that means carbon monoxide formation is favorable, magnesium oxide is converted to magnesium ok. So, there are some web website uh, is given you can you can play with that or you can look at that. Now, so this is the reaction which is used in thermit process, all of you are familiar with thermit process you have heard of ok. So, technically speaking as I was telling you can utilize aluminum, aluminum to react with chromium to get pure chromium, because aluminum this you know diagram from this allegram diagram you can see aluminum is having more delta G or more negative delta G compared to chromium. So, chromium oxide can be converted to chromium by using aluminum, because aluminum oxide formation is more favorable than chromium oxide right. This is this is the this is the standard reaction kind of reaction which you should not forget what when you are looking for Ellingham diagram you must remember something like this whatever is the, at the bottom that will be getting oxidized. Okay, not the other way around. This chromium is not going to react with alum alumina to give you the reverse reaction. So, this is in this case alumina is going to be your sacrificial reagent. It is going to sacrifice itself to give you the pure form of the other one. How is the delta G working out here or more to say since this is almost a two both the reactions are similar. Aluminum, oxygen, the stoichiometric wise everything is exactly same aluminum solid, chromium solid, oxygen gas, oxygen gas and then you are going to get alumina and chromium, uh, chromium oxide right. So, nothing is changing, since nothing is changing in terms of their state like solid, liquid and gas or overall stoichiometric are all same. If you are taking or thinking about delta delta G or the delta G formation for the whole reaction, only thing perhaps you need to worry about the delta H that is the only difference, because delta S is going to be similar or exactly you know comparable you can just cut it out. So, delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. So, overall delta delta G the difference between the delta G is going to be equivalent to the difference in, in their delta H ok. So, since delta S is similar T delta S term you can kind of uh, delete it ok. So, over here if delta G for this reaction is minus 266, delta H is minus 180, what overall you are having is for this reaction delta G is going to be minus 86 kcal per mole right. 
Now, this is what we, we, we know as thermit process. So, delta H is minus 86. Delta G is negative. Delta H is very small. Delta G is approximately same at different, different temperature. So, with respect to temperature, you are not going to see any, any or much difference with respect to delta G. Whatever temperature you do the reaction, you are supposed to get this thermit process. Alumina plus chromium, this alum, alumina formation and there is uh, chromium oxide you can convert because it is becoming independent of temperature. But what usually you need to do is, you need a kinetic, you, you need to cross a kinetic barrier. You cannot just mix at room temperature alumina and chromium, okay. You need to prime the reaction, almost like, you know, igniting your, uh, you know, your, um, what, your, um, this um, explosive or in any of those, um, you know, what are those? Fireworks. Yes, I can see that. Okay. Now, this is, this is a kinetic, so you, you, you need a prime, you need something called priming, okay. We are done, going to be done very soon. So, you need to prime the reaction with magnesium ribbon, but once you initiate the reaction, it's a, it's a autocatalytic process. Once you initiate one time, if you have, let's say, whole mass of, huge mass of this reaction, right after in initiation, you don't have to worry about it because the reaction itself will take care of the lateron ignition period, okay. So, it's, it's a very, you know, autocatalytic type of thing. Once you catalyze, it will be catalyzed forever. Sorry? Sorry? Priming is like initiating, initiating the reaction, okay. You have to initiate the reaction. You have to provide enough activation. You, you need to start the reaction. Activation barrier is there for the reaction. That activation barrier, the moment you cross that activation barrier, everything is downhill. So, thermodynamically everything is going to work out from there on, okay. Now, <coughs> of course, life would perhaps, the world would have been a very good place or much better place if we perhaps need not use charcoal. I think one or few of you are having the queries. It's going to produce carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide. Anyway, it's a bad thing. Right. Of course, lot of this greenhouse effect, lot of global warming, everything is due to, let us say, blame it on Ellingham diagram, okay. It is the charcoal you are using, right. Now, <laughs> the problem is there is no other solution. Perhaps the best solution could have been this hydrogen, right. If hydrogen plus oxygen going to give you water, that water, has it been gas? Ultimately, it is liquid, right? Hydrogen plus, hydrogen plus oxygen, two gas you are consuming and you are forming something water that is liquid. Has it been something gas, okay? More of a water has been, you know, if it is, if it is stable form has been gas, then what would have happened that instead of that carbon, Ellingham diagram that carbon going down, you perhaps would have seen hydrogen to water formation, hydrogen plus oxygen going to water formation or hydrogen plus metal oxide going to form the water formation, that would have been in a negative slope, right. And water being very friendly, you would not have any problem. Since most of the cases, what you see that this hyd hydrogen going to water or hydrogen reacting with metal oxide going to water is running parallel to that of the metal oxide curve, you are not going to use hydrogen efficiently for conversion of metal oxide to metal. And that is unfortunate, I think. I mean, most of the problem, Walsh problem would have been really, really solved, okay. But that's how it is. But of course, there are some reaction, you have to, you have to know relatively where hydrogen is with respect to other metal oxide curve in the Ellingham diagram. So, some reaction you can utilize hydrogen, okay, for the reduction of corresponding metal oxide to the metal, but it is not a generalized solution. The generalized solution is charcoal, that is where everywhere you see the charcoal. Now, the point of this uh, reduction of metal sulphide. 
So, of course, as you mentioned, many metals which are chemically soft, you know, it is again that hard soft acid base principle. Oxide is hard. So, metals which are in harder form or hard cation, metal oxide will be formed and those are the metal oxide we see in the ore. Let us say calcium oxide. Calcium 2 plus is hard, oxy oxide 2, plus 2 minus is hard. Calcium oxide is going to be favorable form. Calcium sulfide may not be that favorable, that much favorable, but because calcium 2 plus is hard, sulfide is softer, relatively softer. So, calcium sulfide or let us say magnesium sulfide formation or whatever titanium sulfide if you form, these are not going to work out, these are not going to be a stable com conformation. So, similarly, when you have metal which is not hard, but more of a soft on a softer side, then metal oxide formation will not be preferable. You will get metal sulfides. In the ore, you will get metal sulfide. Now, these are the, for example, these are the cases copper, mercury, zinc, iron. These are the cases, of course, iron can be iron oxide as well, but still it, it can give you the sulfide form. Now, the reason why we cannot utilize this reaction is very simple. The metal sulfide plus carbon, this carbon dioxide, uh, carbon disulfide formation has no slope, almost it is a constant slope in Ellingham diagram. Carbon going to carbon monoxide, you have seen it is going down, running down. But carbon reacting with metal sulfide, it is a generalized form we have given. Metal sulfide is not like just metal and sulfide. It is, of course, sometime it is, as you have seen, Fe2O3. It is a, it's a simplified form we have given, metal sulfide. Okay. Metal oxide MO, it is not necessarily MO, it can be M2O3. Similarly, metal sulfide can be of different form. Anyway, this is the problem why we, we cannot utilize the charcoal for carbon disulfide formation. It is therefore easier or it is advisable, I think you have almost no choice, but to convert metal sulfide to metal oxide one step and then utilize charcoal to reduce those metal oxide to the corresponding metal, right. So, first metal oxide is roasted or metal sulfide is roasted to metal oxide and then reduced to metal. So, metal sulfide plus oxygen going to metal oxide plus sulfur dioxide plus charcoal giving you the metal and corresponding. Of course, another possibilities are there where your self reduction is a viable technique. What is self reduction? You take copper sulfide, you try to do this reaction copper sulfide plus oxygen, you try to get copper oxide. The moment copper oxide is formed, copper sulfide and copper oxide together can give you copper and sulfur dioxide under that high temperature condition, right. So, this is like a self sorting, self reduction. Of course, hydrogen is also a pore reducing agent for metal sulfide. So, you have to see the relative curve if they are, you know, hydrogen going to water is delta G for that reaction, is it less or more negative compared to the metal going to metal sulfide? That is all you need to care. So, this is the Ellingham diagram for metal sulfide. As you can see, these are, you know, in the metal oxide curve, we were seeing minus 2000, 3000 and so on. But you see these metal sulfide, these curves are not that much thermodynamically favorable, okay. That is a good thing because and then you can convert that into the metal oxide and so on, okay. There are also Ellingham diagram possible for metal halides. There is no way you need to remember these things. Most often, I think few things you should remember, but most often you will be provided with the Ellingham diagram, okay. But you know, of course, which is most electropositive metal and thereby what should be the curve for it, these are few things you should know. But these are metal halide, these are metal halide, this is metal halide Ellingham diagram, of course. So, we have seen oxide Ellingham diagram sulfide Ellingham diagram and metal halide Ellingham diagram, okay. Now, so let me summarize by telling you this part. We have seen different techniques as simple as mechanical separation 
electromagnetic separation and thermal decomposition you can heat it and decompose it. These three things are very easy to understand of course, almost everything is easy to understand, but these are none of these are kind of you know self contained method. You cannot just use one method to purify your ores and get the metal in pure form. Often you have to use the combination of method. Of course, you can use one metal to reduce another metal oxide, right. Also you can use the electrocatalytic reduction where cathode and anode you can have, right. The one which is perhaps most important for us is the Ellingham diagram where we take a metal oxide, use charcoal, reduce the metal oxide to corresponding metal and then we form carbon in oxidized form carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide, right. What we try to also say that similar things are possible for sulphides and halides, metal sulphides and metal halides, but those are not of really that great importance compared to oxide. Metal sulphide almost invariably is converted to metal oxide first and then that is converted to the corresponding metal. Why metal sulphides are converted? Because the carbon disulphide curve is not having a negative slope as we are seeing carbon monoxide case, okay. That is all. Now there are other techniques, lot of other techniques which are utilized quite routinely. These are fusion, distillation, crystallization, okay. Fusion is something, let us say you have, a, you have a rock, you have a rock. Now if you fuse that rock, what will be happening inside that rock some dissolved or some amount of gas will be there. So if you melt it, those gas will be evaporated. So the trapped gases will be evaporated. Of course, that is a purification technique. You can distill, you can distill means let us say you start with a liquid, okay. You heat it at a particular temperature, let us say 200 degree centigrade. So those which are having boiling point suitable less than 200 degree C, selectively some of those or all of those which are having boiling point less than 200 degree C that will be selectively coming out, rest of the material will be in the container where you started with. So you can both collect the material that is left off and material that is going to get boiled and you collect it. You can collect it in fraction wise, one fraction, two fraction and you can increase or decrease the temperature, adjust the temperature, slowly you can increase the temperature so that one by one or compound can come out. Let us say you heat it at 1000 degree C, one metal oxide comes out, okay. You heat it further 1500 degree C, another metal comes out. So by heating at 1000 degree C, you get that in pure form, one, one ore in pure form. By heating just let us say 1500 or 1400, you get another one. So this is another technique. What essentially this extraction technique tells you is, it is a combination of things you need to have knowledge both of course engineering knowledge when you are going to do it practically, engineering knowledge is essential because you cannot just hit without knowing what is going to happen, okay. You have to have those knowledge. In addition of course you can have let us say crystallization technique. You have, let us say you have a five things, five solid material combined. You try to add some solvent, solvent let us say could be water, solvent could be something else and selectively one of those material get dissolved in that solvent, right. So you take it out, you try to grow crystal or you know that that is what is in pure form. So solubility can be utilized either to grow the crystal or to wash it off or take it off, take off particularly one of the metal or metal oxide. So there are, there are other, other lot of other techniques. It is not necessarily you have to read in detail, but it is important that you do understand that those things exist. So thermal decomposition, of course thermal decomposition we have seen, zone refining, this is the last topic, two minutes I will take. What is zone refining? Well, zone refining is very simply. 
it's it's a it's a purification done so that you get a high level of material let's say you have 99% of titanium you want to make it 99.99% titanium how do you do it because that is going to be you know in, in your lot of these metal all the electronic devices you use it required that your metal be pure in that form without that impurity can cost you dearly right so you need to really purify the material okay so this is what is zone refining one of the technique what you have let's say this is your 99% or 90% pure rod of metal let's say iron bar or titanium bar or whatever metal you have now this is this is a circular heater now circular heater if you have so this is a let's say we are having a impure germanium rod let's say this is 90% impure germanium rod okay now it's a circular heater it melts selectively at one position at this position wherever it is heating it is melting temporarily let's say it is heating here momentarily it heats over there and it melts only that region it doesn't melt this region on the top or on the bottom it's a very powerful heater okay it melts only a selective zone and from top to bottom this circular heater you are kind of rotating and bringing it down again putting it back bringing it down so by doing that what's happening is you you are melting it and then cooling it cooling means the moment the circular heater is going out of that zone it is going to cool down so impurities when it is going to get solidified impurities will be coming to a particular so let's say it's a it's a small zone the top material in that small zone the top region will be pure metal and the impurity will cool down and come at the bottom that way if you, because the cooling profile is going to be different for pure metal and impure material whatever is there so that way impurities are going to be on one of the end either it, it is on the top or on the bottom doesn't matter if you keep on doing this you know circular heat if you keep on heating it what's happening is one end of this metallic bar one end of it is going to have the impurity concentrated and thereby you can just cut it off you can just cut it off that impure part and get almost let's say 99.99% pure metal you keep on doing let's say if first time is not giving you very high purity you can keep on hit keep on doing this process after four five times from 90% material pure material you will get let's say something like 99.99% pure material so it's a zone refining you you just zone wise very selective area wise you keep on doing this process all right so that's how impurities get collected i think i am done thank you for your hospitality <laughs>